Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 68 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. My name is Clarissa Beth, and you can find me anywhere on the internet as Crochet Cakes. And I do mean anywhere. I mean Pinterest, Twitter, even though I don't really use it, and Instagram, Ravelry, Ello here on YouTube. Mm, did I mention Pinterest? I think I did. Um, I'm not on Facebook and you can also follow the blog or go read about little snippets of my crafty life on the blog at crochetcakes.com. You may also email me at crochetcakespodcast at gmail.com and I believe that is all for the channel admin. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your crafty and non-crafty life to share some 30 to 40 minutes with me. I've been trying to keep these podcasts short for your convenience as well as mine because I've been trying to do them more often. I don't know if you noticed, but I have been pretty good about update, updating the past three or four episodes every two weeks. I record on a Tuesday, which today is a Tuesday. It is the 24th, 24th of September. It's late in the evening, if uh, that interests you, and I'll try to upload by Wednesday. Usually it's been kind of uploaded Wednesday evening just because, hey, the internet is taking hella a long time uploading my podcast to YouTube, even though it's only like 30 minutes long. But yes, back to the thank yous and back to you. I really want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing and tuning into this channel. And I especially want to thank all the crafty people who have followed me on Instagram. There was a huge, huge boom. And also thank you to everybody who has made a pattern that I designed, who has commented on the pattern I've designed, who's shared a pattern I've designed, my crochet socks which are vintage waves have proven to be pretty popular which i i am so happy guys i don't know if you get this feeling but i don't think i'm alone in feeling that when you design something and you put it out there it's like oh my god it's gonna be so horrible nobody's gonna like it it's gonna suck there's always that kind of fear you know i think you call it imposter syndrome well i always get that every time i design anything but <sighs> At the same time, I also feel so, so happy designing things for you guys. And if you're interested in any of my designs, then please go check out the crochetcakes.com. That's my blog, and that is where I upload all my designs. Most of them are free. I only have one paid for pattern, but half of that design is available for free on my blog as well. So. If you want to kind of see how the instructions are written out, you can go check that out and then go purchase the pattern if it's a, something you're interested in. And that is the Las Nubes top, which is a crocheted uh, top made bottom up, but it is in the round, guys. I know, the mysteries of crochet and, well, I guess knitting as well, because it's kind of a technique you see more in knitting. Also, Thank you to every single one of you who have participated on the Mischief Managed Mal. Now, this lady here, when she created the hashtag, she put Mischief Managed Cal, which was wrong. Um, so I'm checking out both those hashtags, Mischief Managed Mal and Mischief Managed Cal. I'm checking both of them out. So do not panic if you've used one instead of the other. Other, I am checking both of them out. I am trying to go every week into the Ravelry thread and just looking at all those gorgeous Harry Potter makes. And there is an open finished objects thread if you have already finished an object, which I know a decent amount of you have. And if you can't finish an object by, you know, 31st of October, that's okay, guys. That is totally okay. Just participate in the chatter thread. I'm really just looking forward to seeing all your Harry Potter inspired projects and how you connect your yarn or project to Harry Potter. And if you don't like Harry Potter, because I know I have some viewers in this podcast that are not fans of Harry Potter, I hold nothing against you. If you can convince me it's somehow related to Harry Potter, just post it in there. 
months. I'm completely fine with it. I just want to encourage as many of you to participate in this smile because I just, I don't know, I'm so excited. I love it, I love it. And um, it's also Halloween, so if you just feel like making a Halloween related object related to Harry Potter in some way, shape, or form, if you're interested. And also, if you want to learn a little bit more about the mal to get you kind of like kick-started on, you know, wanting to participate or not, then you can of course head over to my blog. I will link the exact blog post down below and there you can see the kind of the rules for the mal as well as some, but not all, of projects that are inspired by Harry Potter. They are both knitting, crocheted, some are free, some are paid for. So there's a, a little just a bundle of joy there. I have been meaning to do a Pinterest board with just Harry Potter crochet, knitting, yarn, you know, all that stuff because it is a mal. But uh, yeah, I honestly forgot that, that, that there's, there's no explanation for you guys. I honestly forgot, but I hope to do better. And I just want to keep sharing with you guys in every possible way. So thank you for participating and thank you for commenting and thank you for spreading the news about the Mal. Right, so I think I've uh, said everything I wanted to say about that. Yeah, but I think it's time to address the elephant in the room, which is a finished object. It's also my first work for the Harry Potter mouth. And it is this shawl that I am wearing and it is the Hagrid's pumpkin patch shawl. It is a triangular shawl. Okay, and then it's got an open arcade stitch border. Now, uh, can you see it in all its glory? It's really funny because I thought it wasn't going to be big enough with one hank of, well, one skein of this pumpkin color, which is from Karen Simply Soft in the pumpkin colorway. But it was, guys. This is only one skein of the main color, which, as I said, is pumpkin, and it uses extended single crochet stitches in its V-shaped shawl, and um, I didn't really block it, I just washed it and stuck it in the dryer, but I would, would recommend that you block it because it's got so much stretch to it. Do you see if you, how I'm pulling it and it just has more stretch to give? So, just, you know, a little, little tidbit. It is super, super soft now, and of course, the um, star of this shawl is the border and this is a vintage stitch pattern from the book vintage dictionary of crochet stitches i do not know the actual name of this stitch because the vintage dictionary of crochet stitches does not put any names on their stitches i know emma from potter and bloom she called this the fancy arcade stitch. I'm calling it the open arcade stitch because, you know, it's lacy and holy. But this border was crocheted using an 8mm hook and Lion, Lion Brand Tweed Stripes yarn in the Wildfire colorway. Now this yarn, in case you can't really see, it's got gorgeous tones of mustards, yellows, wines, oranges. So it really just looks like gorgeous fall colors and it just really the different tones of orange in the shawl reminded me of not only falling leaves but also all the different colors of pumpkins when you go into a pumpkin patch so that's why i called this hagrid's pumpkin patch um as i said the border is really lacy but i kind of made it lacier by using an eight millimeter crochet hook because the yarn is worsted weight um, for the body, but for the border, it's bulky. So it recommended, um, maybe it's what you would call chunky. It recommended a six millimeter crochet hook, but I wanted it super open. So I used an eight millimeter crochet hook. Now, um, the stitch instructions are 
a little bit different than if you go to Emma, Emma's tutorial for the Fancy Arcade Stitch because I had to rework it a little bit to work with the number of stitches I had and to get a clean border around this. And I mean on, on the edge, okay? But I actually love how this shawl came out, which I'm surprised because I am not a huge fan of triangle shawls. But this is just so cozy and big and chunky. And I'm pretty sure you could work it up in any yarn you wanted to. I just did it in acrylic because even though I love wool yarns, I don't feel like I can wear makeup when I'm wearing a wool shawl or wool scarf because I'm always scared it's gonna get powder or foundation on it and it's just gonna be a disaster to wash and you know get clean. So I kind of prefer acrylic shawls because of that. You can just bundle up and look, I'm not even worried because I know I can stick it in the washing machine and then just put it in the dryer and it's all good. But I mean, you can't even get the full picture of the shawl, it's so big. <laughs> Like the border is so huge. Look at that. I think I'm just gonna talk to you guys now while wearing this triangular shawl, like a capulet over my shoulder, like that. So yes, this is my one and only finished object. And I know it's kind of a little cheap because it was almost finished the last time I shared it with you guys, but now it's finished, finished. It's washed, it's blocked, the ends are woven in, the pattern's up on the blog. Finished, finished. And um, I have to check, but I think I also uploaded the pattern to Ravelry. Now what I'm doing with Ravelry, if you still use Ravelry, is that I am creating a page for this pattern design, but in the page it says free pattern and there's a link that'll take you to my blog. It is not in PDF form on Ravelry, but you can put it in your library, so that's helpful. You can add it to your queue, and you can share it. Share it if, the, if, if you make the shawl, you can share it in Ravelry, and I can figure out the way, because I forgot how to put your pictures in the project page. Or is it the shawl design page? You guys know what I mean, right? I'm not, I'm not talking crazy here, right? right <laughs> or left <laughs> sorry i'm just being super super silly right now but we can move on from this one and only finished object which i will be taking off now because i live in florida and it's hot <laughs> i know the autumnal equinox 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 was yesterday on monday the 23rd of september but in Florida, that just means the weather dropped, what, two degrees? So it's still 88 degrees. And it's not really shawl wearing weather. Also, because even though we do have central AC in the house, I don't put it very low. Anyway, we can move on to my next project, which is also Harry Potter related. And it's another entry for the Mischief Managed Mall. And it's the Bark Sweater by Sidstill Sandguild. And I'm hoping I did not butcher that. But it is a gorgeous looking design, very intricate, but super simple. Not gonna talk too much about it because it is a paid for pattern. But last week, when I, well, two weeks ago, when I shared it with you, I only had this tiny amount about literally the starting chain and one row completed, or maybe two. But two weeks later, and I have the main body of the sweater completed. I just have to crochet the ribbing. Now the bark sweater uses fingering weight yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook, but she does give you, she does tell you that some of her testers need to go up to a seven millimeter hook to reach her gauge. I reached gauge with the five millimeter crochet hook, as amazing as that sounds. I thought it was gonna be looser, but it worked out pretty well, and I absolutely love working on this sweater. It's one of those sweaters that I'm working on it because I wanna see it finished because I love it so much and I wanna wear it 
even though it's 80 degrees here. And this is 100% wool, not 100% wool, because I don't know if you remember, I certainly didn't remember, that the makeup of this yarn is tweed sock, 85% superwash merino, 15% nips, 438 yards, 100 grams, and it's by Little Bean Loves Yarn, and the colorway is Hermione. So that is why I am entering it into the Mischief Managed Mel. Now, you probably notice when I hold it up that the color is kind of like a gorgeous mauve. There's, um, you know, it's a very mauve tone with grays and some blush, and I wouldn't say blush pinks, but there's definitely some grayish pink in here, you know, just a mauve color. But if you look the second half of the sweater, you can see more intense colors of the purpley and the pink. And that is because these are different dye lots. The first hank is from the second dye lot and the bottom hank that you can see here, which is what I'm using to complete the sweater, at least the bottom portion of the sweater, is the first dye lot that Kayleen gifted to me three years ago. So, this is deep stash, and I also did not alternate my skeins. Now, I knew that was gonna happen. It's not that I'm super surprised. Um, I have to say that the colors are pretty, pretty similar for ha me not having alternated the hanks, but you can definitely tell that one has more pinks in it than the other. And I'm too lazy to alternate skeins. That's just the reality of it. And second, I had two of the second dye lot, and I knew those were gonna be more similar. So I decided to save my caked up yarn for the sleeves. And I figure I have, there's 100 grams here, so I'll have 50 grams for each sleeve, and that should be more than enough because they're three quarter length sleeves, I believe. And I still have about 15 to 20 grams left of this hank to, which I'm hoping it will be enough to complete the ribbing on this top. Now, I do see it a little bit short, but merino stretches, I'm still hoping it'll be at least 18 inches in length when I actually finish it, because then it'll just be my version of cropped. It'll reach just to the hips and it'll look beautiful on top of a dress or a tunic style, well, a tunic style dress or a um, full skirt dress, you know, I think it, I love that look of dresses and having cropped sweaters on top, which is kind of how, um, oh my God, what's her name? She does a whole bunch of vintage inspired clothing. <sighs> She's a knitwear designer, but she does have a crochet cardigan. And her name, I wanna say it's Amy. It wasn't Amy at all, it's Andy Satterland. I don't know how I forgot that, but I really love the look. If you follow Andy Sat Satterland or have made any of her patterns or know who I'm talking about, then you know that she almost always has like a high waist item or a dress and then her little cropped sweaters on top. I love that look. So I'm hoping that's what this bark sweater will look like. I have to say it is super amazing progress for two weeks, but I have been working on it very, very monogamously. I have not been working on any other project except this sweater and I love it. If you haven't um, made it, I would like to go ahead it's uh, i don't think you'll regret it it does only have two sizes there's a small slash medium and then a large but i think you could probably make the small a bit uh, looser by using going up the a hook size but then bear in mind you will need more yarn now i'm thinking i'll complete this sweater just by using my three hanks of yarn We'll see. I will, of course, report back to you in two weeks' time where I'll hopefully have finished this sweater. And I'm squishing it because <laughs> it's so it's so lovely. Uh, the yarn has been beautiful to crochet up. Uh, I do not think Kayleen has any of this yarn in her shop. 
but if she has the Hermione colorway, go buy it. As you can see, it's beautiful. Now, the only other project I've been working on, and that's during my lunch break, so usually for 30 minutes, I will work on my open socks, which are a sock pattern, a knit sock pattern by Emma from Potter and Bloom. And I already shared with you two weeks ago that I had completed one sock of the open socks, and this is using the Citrus Squeeze colorway, which came in the Knit Crate membership crate from, I don't know, June, May, it was one of those months. And it's in their Knitology Cozy Sock Base, so it's 75% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, and 10% Cashmere, so it's an MCM base, Merino Cashmere Nylon, and it's gorgeously soft, and I'm making this as a gift. The color aptly named Citrus Squeeze looks like strawberry lemonade. We've got pinks, oranges, and yellows in here. And I honestly followed the, the pattern mostly to make the socks, except I did a fish lips kiss heel and I did an umbrella toe, slightly modified because um, this sock pattern uses less stitches than the umbrella toe was designed for. Now where I'm at on the second sock, well, on the, you know, sock to complete the pair, I've already completed the cuff and the leg and I'm working on finishing the heel. Again, this is the Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is only a dollar on Ravelry if you've never made it. It's a type of short row heel and I like to use it because it's much faster than the heel flap and gusset. And uh, socks are the one item that I love to wear. Only enjoy making the cuff. <laughs> I know, it's weird. We all have um, parts of the sock we enjoy making. For me, it's really the cuff. I like casting on a sock and working on the cuff, but when the, once the cuff is done, it's slow going. But even though it's slow going, I'm not really rushing it because these are a gift for Christmas and I'm, you know, it's gonna be October. So I think I'm good on the time frame wise anyway. And I'm still loving the pattern. It's very, it's just such a fun pattern that I think I'm actually going to knit a pair of socks for myself in this, um, with this pattern. I'm not using this colorway because I have to say, um, the colors I'm not crazy about. I do love the yellow and t light orange. I'll call it like a tangerine But I'm not a big fan of the pink and as you saw in the sock you do produce does some <laughs> It does have a lot of pink in it uh, But I'm glad those are coming along nicely and they're just living in this bag that I made ages ago, it's a little macaroon bag with must not mustard, I would say olive green background and white polka dots. It's the perfect sock size, it, you know? And I haven't really been working on much else. I do have, of course, a list of things I want to make and I talked about that in the last podcast. That wish list, lust list, whatever you want to call it, has not changed. Maybe I've added items, but I can't really remember right now. But yes, I have to get uh, cracking on the garments I want to gift for Christmas. So there is my husband's vest and there's also my mother's garment. I'm still undecided on what garment I'm going to crochet for mom. I may end up designing something specifically for her, just keeping in mind um, the types of clothes she prefers to wear now. So loose fitting, a lot less cropped, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult because I always have a tendency to make cropped items for some reason. I think I just really like garments that sit right on top of the waist. But uh, anyway, the other thing I wanted to share with you is a little acquisition, some little acquisitions that arrived and as I had mentioned in the previous podcast, one of my favorite Harry Potter dyers is Kayleen. 
she dyes some gorgeously Harry Potter based yarns. And of course, as a prize for the Mischief Managed Mile, I was going to go and get something from Kayleen. She has several Harry Potter inspired colorways available right now in her shop. And I snagged this one up for whoever the lucky winner is. I kept it in the packaging and so it's kind of difficult to see, but this is a the prongs colorway. So there are tones of brown speckles. So there are brown speckles, teal speckles, some green speckles. It's on a mostly clear base. So I think this yarn will crochet up beautifully just because instead of being variegated, it's more speckled. So if you're a crocheter, not a knitter, this is perfect for you, and if you're a knitter, it'll look really nice too. This is in her sparkle sock base, so it's 100 grams, 438 yards, 75, 20, and 5, superwash, merino, nylon, and stellina. God, this colorway is so beautiful. And I kept inside a little sample of her wool wash bars that she also makes herself, and I kept the sample here for you because I actually own a full wool bar, wool wash bar, and I really like using it. Um, I, If you've never used a wool wash bar before, I don't recommend actually lathering the whole bar when you're gonna wash a garment. I cut mine into pieces and then and I lather the little piece so that I can make the wool wash last longer. So I purchased that for you guys and as a little treat for myself, she had these Knitter's Pride Zing crochet hooks on sale. I think they were 320 or something. So I bought two. I bought a six millimeter hook and I bought a five millimeter hook. I've only used the five millimeter hook, but I really like it. They feel really nice on my hand when I'm using them and it's they feel well balanced, but what's also really funny is that I feel like the tip is lighter and they're a bit weighted at the bottom. If you've ever used Knitter's Pride, let me know what do you think down below. I find them pretty enjoyable. I don't think it'll substitute my tulip crochet hooks, but I do prefer when I move up from six, uh, from five, five and a half millimeter, I do prefer to have a non-ergonomic hook. I just, I don't know, I feel like I crochet better with it. So uh, that's why I was on the hunt for like a six, seven, I already have an eight and I have a 10. So a six, seven, and nine. I've also got the six here, so don't need that anymore. What else can I tell you guys? Um, I don't know. I haven't really been up to a lot other than crocheting and reading every once in a while. You know, I've cleaned the house. I've uh, <laughs> played with my dog. I've listened to copious, copious amounts of Paloma Faith. I've cooked, I've baked. Oh, baking. I made a blackberry cobbler this weekend and it was really, really good. I simply used a recipe from Pioneer Woman, except that instead of using two cups of blackberries, I did um, two and a half, no, I did a pint and a half. That's about three cups of fresh blackberries. And I put lemon zest in the flower part of the cobbler because Edison really likes tart desserts and I love blackberries and lemon together. If you've never tried blackberries and lemon together, give it a go. It tastes great if you're making jam, and it also tastes great if you're making a cobbler and you're putting the zest on the cake part. Also on the baking section, it's fully autumn and I want to make all the pumpkin desserts possible. I'm not even kidding. I really want to make all the pumpkin desserts. I wanna make pumpkin cinnamon rolls, I wanna make pumpkin cheesecake, I wanna make pumpkin muffins, pumpkin pancakes, pumpkin pie, it's all gonna be so 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 good if you know I can find the time to actually bake all these desserts but yeah guys um, 
think that really is it for me this week. Thank you once again for staying and chatting a little bit with me and sharing your crafty time. I hope that you've had a good crafty couple of weeks and I hope that you have more crafty weeks and that they are full, full of aut autumnal, cozy, crochet, knitting, making, just make all the things, okay guys? Make all the things that you can possibly fit in your schedule, but do not pressure yourself into making them. Seriously, do not. Um, I've been crocheting like crazy and I really feel the pain in my shoulder. And I've tried to, you know, keep in mind occupational health, right? Crochet for 45 minutes or an hour, get up, stretch a little bit, don't let my lactic acid stay accumulated for too long. But guys, when the crochet bug bites, who actually wants to take breaks from crochet? But yes, let me know what you think about this episode in the comments below. Please comment. I love, love, love to read your comments. And do not forget to participate in all the cows, if you want, that are going on. Uh, you can double dip in the Mischief Managed Mouth, triple dip, I don't care. I know that um, Hannah from the Cozy Cottage Crochet, she's running a very informal sock knit along and Claudia from Crochet Luna is also running a lock, sock knit along and guys, Socktober is almost upon us. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to join the Mischief Managed Mouth, you can make a pair of socks. I frankly I, uh, want to make a lot of socks. For speed sakes, they'll probably be crochet socks, but anyway guys, this is where I leave you because I'm just rambling now and I do want to go and have some dinner. So happy crafting. Bye.